Okay, I'm Ian from LearnPracticalGist.com. Following on from the last video where I talk about that pointing polygon issue, which I felt I needed to do before I got into the housing market analysis, I want to now address um, some of the housing market analyses problems that I dealt with in your free ebook. So the one I'm looking at now is the one on page eight called Mapping Change in a Real Estate Agent's Market Share. So I've also titled, I've titled this video actually using GIS for market share analysis at user-defined spatial and temporal scales. Now there's a few ideas going on in this heading. The first is market share analysis. So what we're looking at here is we're comparing the total number of sales in an area as defined by a, a database of all sales to a database that refers to sales only by particular agents. So for example, if an agent, if there was a a uh, hundred sales in an area and ten of them were made by a particular agent their market share would be ten percent. This idea of user-defined spatial and temporal scales by spatial I mean space as in mappable, mappable and by temporal I mean through time. Um, user-defined is a really really important feature of um, GIS. When you have full control over a GIS, you've just got this great ability to define, <coughs> pardon me, your own spatial and mapping and, and time scales. So this is in contrast, for example, to a book that you might buy where the scales are, are predefined for you. Okay, let's move on. So what, what one point I made in that last video is that when you have a dot on a map, when you can get a dot on a map and you can get a, a really complete database of dots on a map, so you can throw any boundary around it that you would care to. And this is what we're going to see in the next, in, in the next slide. But in this slide what we see is auction results. Now in the inner city in Melbourne, most of the house sales are via auction. There's so few that aren't made via auction that it's just not worth worrying about. So for 1991, the dots on the map are red, and for sales in 1996, the dots on the map are green. Now, don't worry about the age of the data because um, even though some of these data are nearly 20 years old, it really doesn't matter. The issues remain the same. And really, it's only the GIS uh, technology that's changed, but not the data issues, which is what you're going to see me focus so much on. Okay, so when we talk about data quality with this, one of the things that I um, would like to say is that the auction results geocoded, only about one in two of them geocoded on the first pass. Now by geocode, I mean that's the process we go through from putting a, a turning a dot in a table in an Excel spreadsheet into a dot on a map. Okay, so this is the, uh, after a lot of effort we got them all to geocode to turn into dots on, on maps. So let's look at what happened when we start putting user-defined boundaries around them. And in this case the boundary that we're talking about are, are, are map numbers from a road at, from the road atlas over Melbourne. So we're looking at grid cells here within the map. So what we're looking at grid cell map 57, grid cell A1, grid cell B1, grid cell B3, etc. Because we also have a data set of all the house sales from the valuers general in the area and we can compare these to the house sales um, by individual agents what we're able to, to do is to estimate this market share and we can see that this agent here called Hocking Stewart in 1991 has a really firm foothold on the area surrounding its head office and this is really really expensive real estate here so it's a very very valuable um, asset for this estate agent and as we go down the coast their influence um, gets smaller and that's mostly because these offices here are just sort of opening up in 1991 but when we get to 1996 we see that they're spread over Melbourne uh, both the east and, and the western side and the eastern side is so much greater okay so we've defined these grid cells as our, uh, our analysis scale and 
we can see that they've spread so much further but the really 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 interesting bit here is when we do the time series change so those areas that are shaded blue represent losses in market share and those areas that are shaded red represent gains in market share so what we see here is around their head office is basically they've had all these losses in in market share. So they've been expanding as so many businesses did in the 1990s, but they've taken their eye off the ball. They've moved down the coast, but in this really, really valuable neighborhood here, they've taken their eye off the ball. Okay, so you've been listening to me. I'm Ian Allen from Learn Practical GIS. Really, um, you're going to see a, a whole bunch more of these sorts of videos coming out, focusing on issues of data quality and the sorts of analyses you can undertake in a GIS, in a GIS. Uh, I hope that you tune in for the next episode, and if you uh, have happened to come across this video by, by chance, please go to learnpracticalgist.com, download the free ebook. You'll get on my uh, mailing list then, and you'll get a whole bunch of, vi of videos. This is uh, probably about the fourth in the series, and there's going to be a whole bunch more. So tune in for the next one. Till then, bye. I'm Ian.